Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 2, Part 4 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, focusing more on God's truth about the personal emotional processes relating to forgiving and repenting. The session was recorded on 5th of September 2017 from 12.20 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Uh, I'd like to ask you, we'll go through a series of different questions that hopefully will help our listeners to understand what it's like to personally go through the process of repentance, mm -hmm. uh, what might be involved, but also what sort of steps we might take and what it might feel like as mm -hmm. we go through it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So the first section is about how God's laws operate on me to motivate me to repent my mm. repentance. Mm. So how do God's laws <laughs> operate to affect me, my engaging a personal process of repentance? Yes. Remember from our previous session, we and also from our discussion about forgiveness, which yep. is very similar. We we. God's laws are there to try to change our intention and okay. our desire. We normally, when we've got a lot of hurt emotions within us, or in this case, where we've got a lot of hurt that we've caused other people, mm -hmm. we usually have a strong desire to deny it, a strong desire to avoid it, mm -hmm. um, and certainly not a desire to go through a process where we recognise it and feel about it. And if we haven't if we haven't repented, then we definitely have that. Of course, yes. we def if we haven't repented for any act, we obviously have resistance to feeling about things, yeah. and definitely do not have a desire to intentionally go through a process of repentance. Mm -hmm. So God's laws are there to help us develop a desire, right? So firstly, God's laws measure our lack of desire, and then bring us events through attraction and cause effect and other compensatory based laws, they do things to engender or encourage desire. Yeah. That's their goal. Yeah. And so what God's laws are trying to do is create within me a simple, sincere desire or intention to be repentant for what I have done towards others and how I've harmed others. Mm -hmm. and, and also be repentant for how I've harmed myself. Mm. Because the reality is I've probably done a lot of things towards myself that I should be repentant for as well. Yeah. Now, a lot of people call that forgiving oneself, but mm -hmm. I call it repenting for what I did to one to myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on. So um, if I have harmed myself, mm -hmm. I can understand forgiving. Uh, rep that, that's a process of repentance. What about, I hear some people phrase it, when I have harmed another person, I have to forgive myself for that terrible, un unloving act. Yeah, there's no, in my opinion, there's no such thing as forgiving myself, is what I'm pointing out. Yes. What I'm saying is that every act of to, that I need to engage for myself is about repentance. Yeah. Towards Where I either sinned. towards myself yep. or repentance for how I've harmed others. Mm. Now, this whole concept of forgiving myself for how I harmed you, yeah. right, that is a part of your repentance process. Yes. In other words, you will eventually feel like you no longer have to punish yourself yeah. for what you did to another person. Mm -hmm. But initially, the law of compensation demands the punishment mm -hmm. of self, not by yourself, but it demands punishment because that's what the law demands whenever you do something wrong to harm another. As in, the law will be creating personal pain and suffering for you. Correct. While you refuse to repent for how you've harmed others. Correct. Yeah. So the process of what people call forgiving myself for what I did to you is really the process of truly repenting yeah. for what I did to you. Yeah. And, and if I truly repent for what I did to you, I will get to the point where I no longer feel guilt about what I did to you. And therefore, I will have, as they say, forgiven myself. Yeah. But that's right at the end of the process. Yes. It's not at the beginning or in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because obviously you can't go through the process completely. 
Mm -hmm. unless you've fully repented. But here what we're talking about is that God's laws are motivating me. Excuse me, I'm just going to have a cough. So here what we're talking about is that God's laws are motivating me to get a desire to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of ways, of course, that it does that, like by bringing me events and situations and circumstances and everything <laughs> demonstrating to me that I haven't done it it causes me to get a realization, firstly, an awareness that I haven't been sorry for what I've done to others yep. and that I should be, yeah. and eventually get to the point where I desire to go through the process of being sorry for what I've done to others. And, and that process doesn't demand anything of others, in, including the fact that it doesn't demand forgiveness of others. And what I mean by that, that is... That others forgive me, you mean? That others forgive me. Yeah. Whereas what I see a lot of people who say they've gone through repentance, where they say, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. the next thing they expect is that the person forgives them. Yeah. Now, that, they're not sorry if they, if they believe that. That very attitude indicates a lack of repentance, doesn't Correct. it? Correct. It yeah. does. Yeah. It indicates there's no desire for repentance, in fact. Yes. Right? And all that they're trying to do is earn something mm -hmm. or re re regain a relationship that has been lost through their own action. Uh, without having to do any sincere repentance in yeah. order to do so. Yeah. So, so someone saying, I'm sorry, and, um, and then continuing their behaviour, and someone saying, I'm sorry, expecting you to forgive them, is already not sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And God's laws detect all that. Yeah. And God's laws will correct that as well. Yes. Yes. And they, they will motivate that. They will, they will help the person who's on the receiving end of your bad behavior see that yeah, you're not sorry. Yeah. And that person will start saying to you, no, you're not sorry. Mm. You don't really care about this at all. You only want to get a relationship back with me. That's why you're saying you're sorry. Mm. And God's laws will expose, in other words, our true condition to ourselves yes. eventually. Yeah. So basically, God's laws operate, you're saying, to expose the truth, uh, to generate a desire within us, basically, to, to cause us to grow towards having a desire to actually personally repent. And then once that intention and desire is created, there's an additional thing, isn't it, that the laws operate to then assist with the removal of the sin, the causal... Well, they, they two facts. They help us remove the... If, effects of the sin that we created mm -hmm. that have now that are within us yes so it helps me go through that yeah so that's the compensatory effects that now exist inside of within me within myself within myself within others no, no. not necessarily because that's no. the process of forgiveness for them yeah. yes but it does open them to the process yes. of forgiveness because if i'm i'm admitting that i'm wrong to somebody who is not is saying i wasn't yes that will help them realize i was yeah does that make sense totally. but but that's an, a separate process mm -hmm. obviously what i'm saying here is that the the process of repentance first begins with me having to go through the effects the emotional effects of what i've done yeah that that's where i feel guilt and shame and the, the my conscience is harm is hurting and and mm. i feel like terrible about what i've done and these are all the compensatory effects i feel guilt initially usually and, and then i have to go through shame and other emotions about what i've done and 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 these this is the first part of mm. the repentance process mm -hmm. but that's not the whole part yeah the second part is removing the cause, the reason why I did what I did. Yeah. And that's a completely separate process of forgiveness now of some other thing in my childhood usually that occurred mm -hmm. that caused me to have an established belief inside of me that, that, that I said, harm I'm allowed to harm you yeah. Yeah. for whatever it is, uh, for whatever reason I felt I had for doing so. Yeah. Yeah. And that is a very difficult process because that it, uh, those are injuries where I feel superior to you, where I feel like I'm allowed to hurt you, yeah. where I feel like I should get away with hurting you. And those kind of emotions are very, very difficult to actually relieve. But God's laws will be motivating me in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> very Constantly good. pressurizing me in that direction. Very good. Mm. 
and and once that's done then i move from you having my actions and intentions and desires to harm others to having desires that benefit everyone else. Yes, I, I, and now instead of uh, having a desire to feel superior and to control people and to manipulate people and to harm people and to get their, my addictions met through people and, and all of these other things that I might quite naturally do while I'm in this uh, unrepentant state, yep. now I have exactly the opposite feeling yeah. where I want to help people, I want to assist them, I, don't want to damage them. I'm very careful about how I interact with people in the sense that, you know, well, the reality is once I've released through the repentance, I don't even have to be careful very much anymore because my heart's already in harmony with love of those people. My heart's already sensitive to those things from a desirous place. Yes, yeah. and I desire them. I desire yeah. to assist people and help yeah. people and and cause people's happiness yeah. rather than cause people's misery. Yeah, yeah which is what I, before I'm repentant, I really desire people's misery. Yeah. 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 I desire to make people unhappy, uh, whether I'm conscious of the fact or not, that's really what's occurring. Mm. Mm. So the laws are very, uh, again, very tightly interwoven with the measurement of our soul, measuring what's going on, mm -hmm. seeing all the little intricacies of all of my desires and all of my ideas that are out of harmony with love and correcting every one of them. Yeah. So that I no longer am uh, a person who desires to harm others mm. or harm myself. Mm. 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 So let's talk about what it feels like now while God's laws are operating on me to motivate this repentance. Mm -hmm. So what, what kind of th things can I encounter and feel mm -hmm. while God's laws are operating upon me, as they always are, to motivate me towards repentance? Well, uh, repentance is not just a painful process because of resistance. Mm. That's the first thing we need to understand. Mm. Whereas forgiveness is only a painful process because of resistance. So you're saying with forgiveness, mm -hmm. uh, obviously there's pain within me that I've suppressed or held on to, mm -hmm. otherwise I would have But it's forgiven. because you're suppressing or holding on to it that it hurts. Right. If you'd released it, it would no longer hurt. That's right. But the process of it entering me, even if I forgave right in that moment, mm -hmm. there'd still be pain to release? No, if you forgive in the moment, there's no pain to release. A person who's a celestial spirit forgives in the moment. See, for there to be pain inside of you that resonates with the pain you're receiving, there has to already be prior pain inside of you. Gotcha. Doesn't yeah. there? For yes. forgiveness, totally. in the process of forgiveness, prior pain must exist yep. in order for you to feel pain for so, something somebody's now doing. And when we're talking about the causal pain, so as a child, the first time I'm hurt in a certain way, you're saying the only reason why it, remains painful is because somehow it was shut down from us just correct feeling it and we were shut creates, down from feeling it yeah now now that's the we basis have, of the pain as i said there are huge motivations in parents in particular yeah. to shut down children from feeling their pain yeah huge motivations yeah and that's why most children by very in, by the time they're born they already have motivations to shut down pain yeah. but it's very low motivations because this is why most babies cry readily yeah right so, but as they grow, those motivations become stronger and stronger. The parents' motivations become stronger and stronger. And eventually the child is shut down from experiencing pain. Mm -hmm. If the child was never shut down from experiencing pain, every hurt that it ever received would all have been released immediately. Mm -hmm. And therefore there would be nothing to forgive. Mm. So what I'm saying is the process of forgiveness is only painful because of its resistance. Yeah. Not so with the process of repentance. Mm. The process of repentance is painful for two reasons. The first reason is our resistance to emotion, our resistance to feeling the truth about things, which yeah. is the same reason for as forgiveness. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the second reason why it's painful is because the emotions associated with compensation are painful. Yeah. And purposefully so. Yes. If they weren't painful, it wouldn't then cause us to recollect and feel and go, no, I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. Right. 
So the painful processes involved in repentance involve compensatory processes. Yes. And therefore, compensation itself is painful. Yeah. And it is designed to be painful. Mm -hmm. By God, purposely designed to be painful to correct us. Yeah. So that we don't engage the same kinds of behavior that we are loving as we did before. Yeah. So the painful process in repentance is twofold. The first half of it being the compensatory effect and the second part of it being our resistance. Yeah. So it's important for us to understand that. It is. So go. So we'll go back now mm -hmm. to this is before we're even engaging repentance. Correct. God's laws are operating upon us. Yep to lead us to the point where we want to engage it. So there's two so, factors of this. Yes. There's one is the same way that it's motivating repent for forgiveness. forgiveness. And the other way is associated with the law of compensation. Yeah. So obviously we're going to need to have some pretty strong, big conversations about the law of compensation. And that's our whole next session <laughs> yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. And so. might even be more than that. Who knows? Yes. You know? But it is, a, it is a very important factor yeah. in repentance in particular, the law of compensation. Yeah. And we need to understand the feelings and emotions involved in the law of compensation. And, and a person who's truly engaging repentance will go through the feelings involved in the law of compensation. Yes. Now, God's laws in, are operating in the same way that they were operating for forgiveness mm -hmm. as they do with repentance. Mm -hmm. In other words, there's a heightening of the law uh, or a heightening of its outcome, the it, more resistance we have. It's operation to expose the problem. Yes. Namely. So, so we could basically say in answer to this question that a person needs to first watch the section that we've given as to what it feels like when God's laws operate to motivate forgiveness. Yes. So they, this, that all applies. Yes. Well, there we talked about the, the law of attraction events yep. acting upon the hurt, the resistance to the hurt within us. Correct. So here we'd be talking about the law of attraction events operating on our resistance to seeing the hurt we've, ha we've created for others. To others and ourselves. To others and ourselves. Yes, yep. yes, to others and ourselves and our environment. And the attraction... Might, might not be just people. It could also be things, animals, plants, birds, creation. Yep. What we've done to everything. Yes. It's not just to people now. And the, the proportion or the extent of the event yes. is going to be proportionate to our resistance. Yes. Not necessarily the size of the harm we've created. Yes. Because sometimes we... Well, usually, interestingly, okay. the size of the harm we created is also proportionate to our resistance. Uh-huh. Yeah, that makes sense. So you can see when it comes to repentance, quite often the events have to be quite powerful mm. because God does measure the size of the event that we did, mm -hmm. the compensatory part of the pain, if you like. Yeah. So you could say, I, so I'm attracting events that measure both the compensatory requirements mm -hmm. and the resistance added together. Mm -hmm. And that's how much the law is going to have to create an event to trigger it. An addition of the two, both mm -hmm. the compensatory effect and my resistance to it are added together. You see, if I can give an example of the compensatory effect so we can understand the linkage. In the compensatory effect, there is a measure of intensity of what I did to somebody. Yes. I did damage to them and it caused a certain level of intensity of emotional harm in them. Mm -hmm. It caused a certain level of damage to my environment. It caused a certain damage to myself. And all of those feelings have been perpetrated towards myself. They entered myself. God, the law, God through the law made those feelings enter me. Yes. And it's proportionate. So if I'm in this shopping center and I accidentally run into someone with my shopping trolley, yeah. there's a compensatory effect that is vastly different to if I go into the shopping center with a shotgun and shoot someone. Correct. The compensation is going to be vastly Massively different. Massively different, yes. obviously. One is yes. an accident that didn't harm anybody permanently. 
The other is an accident that harmed a lot it's of lives. It's not an accident. It it's not a, an accident. Yeah. Harmed a lot of yeah. lives. So obviously the pain associated with it is going to be quite high when we come to feel it. Yeah. That's the pain that's going to be there already for us to feel. Yes. Automatic that I shoot someone, that pain's that on pain's my soul. That bang there. Yeah. It's going to be there. It's going to stay there. And it's going to have to be felt and it's going to be quite intense because it's the addition of all the pains of every single person that was harmed by my event. Yes. So if I've murdered 5,000 people, the compensatory right. effects are massive. Yes. yes. You follow? Yep. Yep. So here we go. We, we got this massive compensatory effect now that's built in. On top of that, we've got our resistance to feeling it. Yes. Which is now on top of that. Yes. Now, now there has to be other events that happen. Yes. That trigger us into realizing these things. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be pretty massive events. Mm -hmm. Now, is it possible that I desire then to become sensitive to the pain that I've caused to others, mm -hmm. which will include the compensation, thus reducing my resistance? Mm -hmm. Would that affect the size of the attraction event? Do you follow where I'm not, going not with that Not a large question? amount because the compensatory side of the, of the event is much, much larger now because of what we've done. The compensatory part of the event is a, a large portion of our pain. But is it possible, say, that I've, uh, I've shot a bunch of people in the shopping centre, I go to prison, I stew in my juices for 18 months and then somebody at the dinner table starts talking about how they've shot other people but I've already that's an attraction event but I've already developed enough like desire to feel about that issue that it it helps me connect to the pain or it, well that's true it can do but but it's going to have to be like Honestly, for a person who purposefully chose an action that was unloving, mm -hmm. that harmed a person, another person to such a massive degree, yeah. it's very, very difficult for them to enter a state of repentance because they believe fully in the act they took. Yes. So, and they have a whole series of justifications. A for, huge amount of justifications. Their, otherwise, they wouldn't have taken the action. Correct. Yep. They would never have done something so massive without there being a huge number of justifications. So then, given the way that God's laws operate, so I know many women who've had abortions. Yes. Which is quite a willful act. It is. Many of them had conscience pangs before, during and after doing it, at which they could override completely. They had a lot of internal justification for doing it. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. God's laws must be operating then because there's a large compensation for such an act. Yeah, it's a murder. God's laws must be operating to bring the massive law of attraction events constantly. Why do they remain unaware? Because the average woman on this planet thinks it's her right to use her body ever any way she feels fit. But wouldn't God's laws be wanting her to see that? Of course, of yeah. course. But if everyone around you agrees with your perspective. They kind of drown out God's laws. Well, no, you have to drown out laws, your own conscience. As you know, most women who have had abortions drown out their conscience quite massively. Yes. And they use justification such as fear in particular. Yes. And this is a big problem. Women are, women are frequently using fear as a massive justification to have an to abortion. Sin. Yeah. To sin, a yeah. massive sin. Yeah. Uh, from God's perspective, it yeah. harms the life of another person. And so uh, women constantly use this justification. If and, and as I've said to you, in private, women will march down the street mm. for their right to have abortion, mm -hmm. right? Now, if men march down the street for their right to murder, it would be considered an outrage. Mm. But women marching down the street for their right to have an abortion, men and women approve of. Mm. So this tells you that society's collective viewpoint of it. Yes is massively flawed yeah and since it's massively flawed the woman's conscience is going to be massively damaged yes so how then would we see god's laws operating because this is this question is about what it's like as god's laws operate upon people 
to, around this. Well, God's laws are still operating. <clears throat> they, they are still having an effect on every one of those women who, yep. just like it's having an effect on a person who's in prison for murder. Yep. But because the woman's not in prison, and because the woman has the acceptance of her peers, and mm -hmm. because the woman has the acceptance or the general acceptance of society, the woman now has a lot of methods that mm -hmm. she can choose to mm -hmm. detune from the act. To detune from the pain of God's laws operating upon her. Not only upon her, but also upon her children that she aborted. Yes. If she could feel them, she would never want to do it again. Yes. If she could feel the damage that was done to them and how long it's taken for them to overcome the damage, she would never do it again. Mm. But she's detuned from all of that. Mm. Purposefully detuned from all of that, mm. I might add, so that she doesn't have to feel about any of those things. Mm. So while many women's conscience may partially or a little bit bother them, mm. the reality is there's a huge amount of motivation there for them to completely ignore their conscience mm. and completely ignore the pain that comes through the compensatory effects until they arrive in the spirit world. Mm. Mm. And then, of course, they're presented with those shocks. And for many women, they are completely shocked. They think they had a great life where they had one or two abortions and they think they had a great life and they, did, they were a good person and everything. And they arrive in the same condition as a person who murdered one or two people. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I was just thinking it's really interesting that people generally seem to be more sensitive to law of attraction events which are acting upon them being harmed than they are because God's laws are operating. And as you've just explained, it's even more profound. It's even more pronounced the pain that we have within us when we've harmed another person and yet as a general rule what I notice is that we're all less sensitive to those law of attraction events that are attempting to mm. highlight that pain the compensatory pain that we have about hurting others well there's reasons for that <clears throat> many of them include the fact that the fact that I'm justifying the harm in the first place yes yes of course is an indication of how detuned I am from my conscience and God's laws and, the, you know, love and other things with regard to those particular things that I'm choosing to do. Mm. So it's, it's very important for us to see that the level of detunement to my actions is what causes me to actually engage those actions. Mm. And the more higher my justifications are to be unloving towards others, the more difficult it's going to be to be sensitive to what those justifications are. Mm. In other words, I'll believe the justifications are real and true and deserved and right when the opposite is the case. Yeah. And because I have that level of like approval for my own unloving actions, yeah. it's going to be very, very hard for me to be sensitive to how the laws are trying to correct my unloving actions. Mm. And often we then feel like when the laws are trying to co correct our unloving actions and highlight our unloving actions, we suddenly feel like we're being harmed. That's what I notice in most people. Mm -hmm. When they are the perpetrator, yeah. they frequently believe they're being harmed when somebody is just treating them correctly or truthfully or lovingly. Or when they attract an event which is lesser in intensity, uh, intensity of what they've ever done. Of <laughs> no, no, yes, lesser intensity of their exact same sin. Yes. Sometimes they've they've sinned in the same way, except in an extreme way, and they attract a small event, and then they feel like it's the end of the world. That's right. Not seeing the own, their own hypocrisy in Correct. the fact that they have been harming people in that way. Correct. For 20 years or something. As I say, the compensatory effects and the level of detourment that can cause a person to harm others mm. already has to be massive. So interestingly, if we're thinking about what it feels like as God's laws operate upon me to motivate my repentance, yeah. often doesn't feel like that much until we, till, uh, till things get pretty extreme. Well, it doesn't feel that much, but it's not because they are, it isn't that much. No, yeah. it's, it's because we're in complete denial yeah. of how much. Yeah. Complete denial. Yeah. And we had to be in complete denial to, to act the, in, act in the, do the act in, in the, first the first place. place. We had to be. We had to already be detuned from our conscience, already be justifying, unloving, already feel entitled, already feel 
like a lot of already feel superior or already feel yeah. you know that we we can we're allowed to already yeah. feel that god's not going to punish us already yeah. there's a lot of massive beliefs that cause us to take an action that's a sin towards others yeah or to the environment mm. and it's very hard to correct them because of the massive amount of false beliefs we have. Yeah. Far more than we have with regard to forgiveness. Yes. Yeah, far more. Mm. And that's why it's much more difficult uh, to go through, sincerely go through the process of repentance than it is to go through the process of forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, as I've said in the notes here, yep. I've got a God's law of attraction brings us the events that mm -hmm. show me how I'm hurting others. But I ignore them. Mm. God's law of attraction brings me events of a similar nature. I ignore them. Or I blame others for Or I blame yeah. others for them. Yeah. And I react angrily again, even perpetrating the same behavior back again. Mm -hmm. God's laws then bring me the exact same intensity of how I've harmed others. Yeah. You know, potentially with the, the death of someone I love or... Mm -hmm. uh, and if I still, I, I usually still ignore them, unfortunately, because yeah. I'm so detuned yes. from what I've done. Yeah. And, uh, and you can see God's laws are operating in a massive way. My physical body is getting destroyed by the emotions that are within me. Yeah. And I ignore that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As well. Yeah. And um, people around me are pointing out that I'm doing things wrong and I ignore that. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Whether they're kind or not kind doing it, I still ignore it. Mm whether they're kind or not kind. Yeah. And, and like you can see, this is a constant buildup of this stuff, of, of these kind of emotions. And this is what it feels like. Eventually I get to the point. Unfortunately for most people, it's well after they've passed into the mm. spirit world. But eventually I get to the point where I realize that I've sinned. Yeah. Because of the massive amount of things that are now happening through these attractive events, because of what's going on in my soul, that I'm attracting these events. And eventually I get to the point, and, and for most people, unfortunately, it's only because they're now in the hells mm. and they can do nothing else but admit. Yeah. That, that that's sad, makes sense. but yeah. that's the way it is. Very yes. few people actually go through sincere repentance on the planet. Mm. They usually go through it after they've passed. Yeah, mm. yeah. Just mention a couple other things that we've got here in our notes. Sure. They're just slightly different from our forgiveness ones. Of course, they're going to be different because it is a different it's, process. Yes. It's an additional process. Yes. Mm. But we talked about uh, kind people and how they would approach our lack of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But then there's unkind people who will actually exploit our lack of repentance uh, in order to um perpetrate their unkindness perpetrate, um, their unkindness and use us in in ways that help them either further their uh sort of sin mm -hmm. uh further sin against other people mm -hmm. kind of so we exploit be, others so unfortunately when we don't repent we become a player yeah in worse acts mm -hmm. that we now also will pay penalties for yeah we can become a player because we're now easily manipulated yeah. by spirits or other people into doing these things. Mm. So, for example, someone like Hitler can't come into existence without there being a huge amount of people who agree with him. Yeah. And many of the acts that those other people did in support of Hitler's belief systems did it because they themselves had the same belief systems. Yes. And, and this is the thing, is that even things like genocide that has occurred in history can't occur mm. unless you become a player in yeah. a larger scheme of things. Yes. And therefore become also a perpetrator involved in those, yes. that larger scheme of things. And even if the person who leads, say, that genocide has a certain set of beliefs, um, I only need to have another set of beliefs that that, that person can exploit an unrepentant attitude towards others and an entitled feeling towards others that that person can exploit. I don't even have to have the same injury set. Although I probably need to, when it comes to killing people, Genocide, obviously sure. I need to have some pretty yeah. strong yeah. Uh, justifications for doing it, right? Yes, yes. 
Yeah. But yes, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have to be identical set well, of emotional beliefs. Say, for example, um, the fashion industry. Yes. I can be heading it uh, like this fast fashion thing that happens now where just every six weeks there's a new fashion mm -hmm. and it's sold mass, you know, it's sold everywhere and women are told you need to wear this and yeah. look awesome. My core exploitative attitude can be oh, i'm going to make money off people's insecurities yes and i can then exploit the injury in women of i don't feel attractive i need to get other women's approval i feel uh, you know i'm willing to do anything basically to avoid feeling like ugly mm -hmm. uh and then i become uh, my lack of kind of repentance my feeling i'm entitled to do whatever it is to mm -hmm. avoid that emotion mm -hmm can be exploited by someone who's interested in money alone or something, for example. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a, this is a big problem, as you can see. It globally, <clears throat> yeah. A person who, who does not engage repentance exposes themselves to become a player, a part of larger problems. Yes. Which also then means they have to pay the penalty of becoming a part mm -hmm. in those larger problems. Yeah. You see this with war mm. a lot. See, war exploits people's fears. People who refuse to repent for their fear are easily exploited into engaging fear to harm other countries. Yes. They will have to pay the penalty for that. Yeah. So we see this uh, re reaction and interaction happening frequently mm. where a person refuses to address their own emotional pain yeah or their own p beliefs of superiority and other things only to engage a process of murder in the end yeah right yeah very very damaging processes very that damaging. are involved if we don't repent yeah. yeah yeah and god's laws are there the question here was that what is the feeling is god's laws mm -hmm. are there trying to expose this but as we can see the level of denial in the population is very very high yeah when it comes to not to to repenting mm -hmm. much higher than it is yeah. to forgive yeah yes yeah but yet we are all in a lot of physical and emotional pain mm -hmm. and that is the operation of god's laws trying to expose this lack of repentance in us correct yeah the reason why we're in such tremendous physical and emotional pain is because of the collective refusal refusal to yeah. repent for what we personally are involved in doing and also personally supporting yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and they're all human creations god's not going to fix them yeah we have to fix them yes mm. yeah mm. yep and obviously the the aim is to get us to a point where we want to fix them yes that's the whole why the laws are operating in that way exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. There's other okay. things there about the attempt to utilize your lack of recognition of sin in order to support somebody else's sin. Yes. This is a very important point too, I feel, because frequently, you know, the laws are there <coughs> trying to expose to us that um, we need to stop supporting the sin of others. But frequently, a person who is not repentant wants everyone around them to support their lack of repentance. In other words, to say, no, you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. It's like a heap of guys getting together and one guy is, is having sex with a lot of different women and hurting a lot of different women through that process. And all the other guys go, you beauty, go for it. Isn't it wonderful? Because they all have the same desire to do yep. the same thing if they could. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And this is what happens is that we frequently engage again now associations are such that we engage people who will approve of our actions mm. Mm. is that also you know we're talking about utilizing my own lack of recognition of my sin so if if say you're in that group of guys and there's a young guy who's never known any other guys and all the guys has ever known have this attitude to women so he's very unsensitive to the sin at this point See, I can't agree with that. Yeah. If he's never been involved in the sin, it's yeah. highly likely that he's going to be quite sensitive to the sin. And it's only through a series of choices and decisions that he desensitizes himself mm -hmm. to the sin. You see? Yeah. Hmm. 
Okay. It's very rare for a person to purposefully take actions that harm other people or the environment without knowing what they're doing. Yeah. Unless they've been punished away from that, unless there's some kind of fear. It's even then very rare. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand the point then. How can I, how can someone utilize my own lack of recognition of my sin? You mean a willful recognition of sin there? Yes, my own desire to avoid my own recognition of sin. So, so willful, because willful. you're saying there's it's no way you hard. can't be aware of sin. It's, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And particularly sin to harm others. It's yes. quite pain that others are being harmed, usually, yes. when you're harming them. And the, the only time I'd probably uh, say that's not the case is when you're feeding codependent addictions. It uh-huh. might not be as clearly defined to you then. Yeah. But, but usually it is. When, when you're harming others... Usually it's very clear that you're harming them. Yes. And usually those people are complaining that you're harming them and everything. So obviously, usually very clear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, for me to then continually engage it obviously means that I must be quite detained from it. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, I got you. Mm. I got you. All right. Mm. Okay, very good. My conscience obviously will bother me too. Yep. Just let me uh, have a pause. <coughs> You're going to be all right. Okay. One, two. On me, girls. Three. Four, we'll see how we go. Five to go. Yeah. Um, my conscience will bother me too, obviously. Yeah. Um, the conscience, which we will learn about later, is a, is a mechanism by which God can communicate God's truth to us. And, and that is going to be <coughs> at us constantly yeah. saying, you're doing the wrong thing, you're doing the wrong thing, you're doing the wrong thing, you're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. And we have to become more and more desensitized in order to avoid to it. To avoid it, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, okay. So that's how God's laws are operating upon us. Yeah. In many different ways and yep. lots of different painful ways. And yet, as we've mentioned many times, we're often fighting even the awareness of that pain. Yes, obviously God's laws also have the ability to operate on many pleasant ways. When we begin to actually want to engage the process of exactly. repentance. Exactly. But yeah. here we've been talking primarily about getting the intention to, which means we don't have the intention to, and these are the ways that God's laws will be operating upon us. And how it's going to feel. Mm. Yeah. Intense. Yeah. But we're frequently highly detuned. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting, the more sinful a person is, the more highly detuned they are. Yeah. And you can see it. Uh, you know, we see it every day when we mm. have our seminars. The more sin a person is doing, the less conscious they are and the less conscious they want to be of, of their sin. Of their sin. Mm. Yeah, that's very interesting. And I'll, in tomorrow's session on conscience, I'm going to ask you a bit more about that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Let's talk about speeding up the process of repentance. Yeah. So in the last section, we t- we t- I had a question about if I can see there's something I need to forgive, uh, but I'm not really yet wanting to do it, how can I speed up that process for myself? Mm-hmm. Now we're asking the flip side question, if I, if I can see rationally, gee whiz, I can see I probably have hurt someone there, but I don't actually care yet. <laughs> really, if I'm honest emotionally, mm. how can I speed up uh, this desire to really engage a process of feeling my pain about what I've done? Yeah, well, the first thing I'd like to say is that if we've got to the point where we can see, even intellectually, that, um, you know, that we have done something wrong, yep. that's pretty massive. <laughs> okay. Because, as I've already pointed out in this discussion about repentance, um, it's very, very unusual for a person who is engaged in harming other people regularly, hurting others mm-hmm. and hurting the environment. It's very, very rare for them to even have a moment of self-reflection about their behaviour, let alone come to recognise that they are actually mm. doing something wrong. Mm. And it's not... Is the main problem they face when they pass in the spirit world is not the things they know they did wrong, yeah. 
rather the things that they had no idea were wrong. Yes. And we've talked to spirits like that, haven't we? Who say, yeah. the biggest problem I had was all the things that I thought were right that were, that were really wrong. wrong. Yeah. And this is the problem with uh, repentance is yeah. that we often engage harmful behavior because we think we're right. Yeah. And that is a massive problem to get over. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Now, to speed up that problem alone requires that we become aware that probably most of the things we're doing are wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rather than believing that almost everything we do is right. Yes. Now, you know, that, that, is, a big, that is a big shift that we need to make. And very few people who engage in sin regularly ever make that shift mm. on earth. Mm. And it's only when they come face to face with their true condition and face to face with their hellish location mm. that they start seeing that something must have gone wrong and it must have been something they did. Yeah. So, so that's first. That's yeah. the first thing you need to say about it. <laughs> um, is it fair to say then, because when we talked about this in the forgiveness section, mm -hmm. you talked about removing, okay, you can see there's something you need to forgive. You're not yet feeling about it. You're not yet really wanting to feel about it. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is re re begin removing these resistances. Mm -hmm. Is it fair, and a lot of them are going to be the same mm. uh, in this when it comes to repentance. Yep. Is it fair to say then that as I start to remove these resistances, not necessarily with the aim to repent, but perhaps with an aim to forgive or with an aim to live more in harmony with God's way, that I'll begin to become more sensitive to the way that God's laws are operating upon I me? I don't think so, because it's like... A person who is perpetrating acts towards others, harmful acts towards others, is highly unlikely going to forgive first. And the reason why is because they have no motivation to. They're the one doing most of the harm to others. Mm. So it's highly unlikely they're going to do any forgiveness first. This is why it's yeah, so hard. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, I the only times that I feel motivated or that I feel like the the need to forgive hits me between the eyes is when I realise, man, I'm harming this person with these actions and I want to stop, I want to repent, and then that leads me to feeling like I want to... Correct. I, I want to deal with this forgiveness issue. Correct. Like, yeah. It's very rare. Oh, I've just got to stop again, sorry. So you just had to have a little break because there's a fair few spirits unhappy with the truth about repentance and unhappy with jesus <laughs> unhappy with my man about it um but basically i was just raising this idea about how or you were telling me that it's very rare for someone to become more sensitive to their need to repent through becoming more sensitive to uh, um, a desire to forgive or or a need to forgive because the person who who needs to repent very often has no motivation to forgive mm. in fact is it is it more fair to say they will see things that they feel they have to forgive no they won't even that, feel they have to forgive that's no, why or they feel they're being harmed in ways that aren't, they aren't actually being harmed from correct God's perspective. they feel they're being harmed by things that are not harming them yeah but they also then feel resentment about that and then they go on the attack uh, they don't even want to forgive uh, right. So people who are not repentant generally also have no intention to forgive. Yeah, right. And as I said, forgiveness is an easier process than repentance. So, so naturally, mm. a person who needs to repent is going to go through a much more difficult process. Now, you can see this in practice. You know, if you look at uh, many of the interactions we've had with people in the last 10 years, uh, you've known me. Yeah. You can see that every single person where i've raised an issue where they need to repent about has basically gone ballistic at me yes and many of them have never seen me again let alone who, listen to anything again mm. right so but when it comes to them asking about forgiving others uh. most people stay in the conversation well and that's why <laughs> that's probably what uh, <coughs> excuse me <laughs> now i can't talk <coughs> that's what uh, I was reflecting on is that 
I see people engage and ask a lot of questions in our seminars for hours and hours and hours and want to talk about the ways that they've been harmed. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to us talking about the way they're harming others? Well, big lack of engagement there. No desire whatsoever yeah. by the majority of people to have that discussion at all. Yes. And every time I attempt to, yeah. the main response is rage, anger, and, and the main response is you're hurting me, I'm, yes. that I'm hurting them somehow. Yes. That I'm damaging them now somehow because I'm telling them some false thing about themselves. Yes. So does that mean then logically all of their, these same people engaging all of this discussion about how they've been hurt, supposedly under the guise of engaging a process of forgiveness, they are insincere in that because if they were sincere, they would be more open to the concept of repenting themselves. Yes. So their motivation in discussing the harm that's been done to them is in order to champion the harm, hold on to the resentment and live in a state of unforgiveness. And justify their own... Poor treatment of other people. Yes. Sad, huh? It is sad. Yeah. But that's what I see playing out frequently. You know, you, you remember all of the women that we've removed from the group, the last assistance group. We removed every one of the ones we removed because they have had a long history of desiring to harm others. Yeah. While at the same time saying that they have no desire whatsoever to harm others. Yes. And I've had a long history of attempting to harm us. Yeah. And have no desire to repair that. No. But they still want us to tell them how they can forgive others. Yes. And they're not even anywhere near forgiving other people mm. because they still perpetrate their own, un own unloving behaviour on others. Mm. See, see if, you're, if you're in a state where you think that what you're doing to other people is fine, mm -hmm. how can you correctly analyse when other people have harmed you? Well, that's right. You can't. No. Yes. And the reality is none of, uh, very few of the people we've ever spoken to about these subjects have even had a single ounce of self-reflection mm. about how they're harming other people. Mm -hmm. So then if I was one of those women, mm -hmm. because this, this section is about speeding up the process of repentance, mm -hmm. if I was one of those women and I listened to this recording and said, well, that's me, um, how can I... Even the statement, that's me, is going to be very hard. <laughs> yeah, and even the question, how can I then start to engage this process, shows a development that's significant, is what you said Correct. earlier. Yeah. A person that even says, yes, <clears throat> I am one of these people who need to... And sincerely feels it, not and just sincerely says it. feels it, yeah. is yeah. already in a significantly improved state Yeah. compared to what they were before. Yeah. Mm. Otherwise, we wouldn't have removed them, obviously. The fact that yeah. we've had to remove them is proof that yeah. their state is very poor yeah. and, and, and not improving. Yeah. Otherwise, we would never have to remove them. I, as you know, I have tolerated a large degree of a lack of knowledge and a, a, lack, and a desire for ignorance on the part of people yeah. when it comes to their harmful behaviour towards others. Yeah. I have tolerated it to a large degree. Yeah. I'm tolerating it less now. Yeah. But... You know, the fact that we've tolerated it to a large degree is something we're correcting. Yeah, it has needed been to correct. Good on our but part. But at the end yeah. of the day, so it's a good thing on our part. But at the end of the day, it's highly unlikely those people we've removed are going to have a large self reflection about the reason for their removal. But at least we are now operating in harmony with what God's laws are attempting to show them. We're becoming someone who is also attempting to show them, yes. which is the most loving thing we can do. That's right. What we're trying so. to do here is, is help them to get to a point where they can see. Hmm. So this is, it comes down to some of these other things that go on in terms of speeding up the process of repentance. You know, you can speed it up yourself. But it, and then there's other people that can help you as well. It seems like it, most of the speeding up of repentance until you have that aha moment of, oh, I've actually done some harm, yep. it must come externally. It does. It there's no other it way. It has to be the operation of God's laws and the love of others yes. that is going to create that. Correct. And yeah. the refusal of others to prevent, uh, to, to accept. keep accepting your sin. Yeah. You know, the, these are, 
see so the first phase if you like which is uh, becoming aware yeah to speed up the process of becoming aware most people who sin can't do it themselves yeah um and it's a sad truth but yeah. but unfortunately they they don't do it themselves they could mm -hmm. by being a lot more humble and less arrogant and you know a number of other things mm. that they obviously are less superior and so forth right they could speed it up but they don't but that process yeah yeah as i can see that when you're living in justified sin you really do n need external assistance to see that and then mm. it becomes a choice very like Yes. I see some people make better choices at that point than well, when others. You, when you think about it, for 10 years we've been stating to most of these uh, women who are treating other women badly and other people badly, we've been stating to them that they are sinning. Yeah. They've completely ignored it. Yeah. And, and so whatever we said meant nothing. Yeah, it meant nothing. And meant nothing, they've, they've completely disrespected it, mm. completely. Only by acting yeah. have we enforced what we're saying. Yeah. But even then, the majority of them, I in fact, agree. I only know of one that's yeah. actually even attempted to correct their behavior. Yeah. Um, of all those people yeah. that we've removed, the rest are acting in their justification. And we should say that in our private life, we've had, to, or in our work life, if you want to put it that way, mm -hmm. with divine truth, we've had to do this with some men as well. Yes. And yeah. they're all really in the same boat. Yes. With a long standing history of ignoring it and yes. still ignoring it really after and a person acted. ignores it because they believe they're right and you're yeah. wrong that's why yeah. they ignore it so so they say they're listening to jesus but yeah. they don't they don't think that no if they did they'd listen more and do <laughs> more you know what i mean yeah. the reality is they believe that they they what they do is they tune in and this is what a person who does not want to repent does frequently they tune in only to what they want to hear yeah. and tune out of the rest yeah and because they are harming others they have a higher desire to tune out yes. than the majority of people do. Yeah. So it's going to be very, very hard to reach them. Mm -hmm. And the only way to reach them is the way God reaches them, by acting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what God does is the law of attraction events and bang, 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 but you just keep on coming, keep on coming, yep. keep on coming, keep on coming, until the person realizes, wow, maybe they're keeping on coming because I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, then, well. so obviously, now, now let's say they've gone through that first phase. Yes. <laughs> the first phase being this terrible state of a lack of humility, arrogance, and total denial that they're even doing anything wrong yeah. when it's quite plain to everyone around them that they are. Yeah. All right. So let's say they get through that state. Now they can engage. Mm dealing with their resistance yeah and they can do that in an active way they to speed up their process yeah they can yeah and that's a very very similar way of to the what it was in repentance of forgiveness of oh, forgiveness sorry yeah. speeding up you know so the things it's like really exactly the dealing same with things. your intellectual belief systems dealing with your emotional belief systems working through pressure from others to support your sin yeah. working through why you want to sin Yes. Why is it that you like sinning? Yeah. You know, what's going on? And, you know? and the issues of faith about uh, and acceptance of God's truth about emotion. And even God's truth about, and about sin. Sin and compensation. Exactly. Like yeah. if, if, if a person does not want to accept what God, God is telling them through their conscience that they are sinning and they mm. do not want to accept it, then they're gonna, not going to be able to speed up the process of repentance. Yeah. They're going to be in a process of very big resistance. And as we've talked about already, any resistance in the process of repentance is going to have a much more difficult time and a much more difficult life than any resistance with the process of forgiveness is yeah. going to have. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, well, yeah. that's how to speed up the process of <laughs> repentance. <laughs> so, yes, but um, obviously, if you can see, and this is something I'd probably like to say to people generally, because it is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. If you can see that somebody actually loves you and has no ulterior motives for telling you something, then my advice to you is to trust them when they're telling you that you're sinning. Yeah. Because if you don't, 
you will never have that first step of awakening and therefore never be able to speed up your own process of repentance. Yes. So it's mm. very important, very to, important to say. Yeah. Mm. Bravo. Okay. Yeah.